Last time we fully blackboarded Lotus Island, which I believe was one of our best and cleanest runs yet. So I wanna use that momentum and take out another intermediate map, this time being Moon Landing. Now last time was shoots and it didn't go as perfectly as planned as I wanted it to, but I'm feeling really good about this one today on Moon Landing. And I think we can set a really good score for intermediate maps to come. Now I can't believe I'm actually gonna say this, but Sada is not the hero for this run. She just won't be too good because you wanna focus a lot of your firepower on this map directly into the center of the craters, in which case I think that Etienne and Oban are going to be our go-to heroes. Etienne more so for the fact that he has that global camo, which will super help us out in those harder rounds, but I am going to be using Oban for the more beginner ones because he has those brambles and he can shoot directly into that crater. Now I chose Moon Landing basically because there's no water. I feel like we've been heavily relying on subs a little too much lately, and so I wanted to take that option away from us, and since there's no water, no subs can be used. So let's dive in. FN9, hit play, grab our Oban, place him right here, and then go for it. And this is why I chose Oban, because he can attack directly into the center of this crater. Unlike most of the other towers, they're, you know, they're red blocked because their sight can't see in there. It's only going to be towers like the Alchemist can see right in, or the Wizard if he has the top path upgrade, which is weird. And then, of course, global towers like the plane and the helicopter are going to do us good. And even the like Druid with this Druid of the Jungle stuff will be a great tower, which we should just start with too, because I don't want to like lose early in the beginning because I'm always talking in the beginning, messing everything up. And I don't know exactly why, but I was, I've always had a soft spot for this map. It's always just kind of grown on me. Maybe I just like space things, but this map just feels really cool. And I like it for the towers that you can use on it, which leads me to my next point. I'm going to try to redeem a tower that I've been talking a lot of smack on. And I think, I don't know if it's because I feel bad or because I want to see it good in my eyes because I just feel bad for talking smack on it. But I want to use the mortar today because I think he'll be a great tower for this map because he's centralizing all of its pops right here in one spot. Now on Lotus Island, that was one of the best and cleanest runs in my opinion, but we still got fourth place. And the reason that was is because we used slow towers. We had the Icicle and Pale, which was slowing all the balloons down. The main Moab was slowing balloons down and then the mortar's not the best damage dealer in the game i didn't know that at the time i thought that if i just slowed everybody down and then just smacked them with a bunch of damage from the mortar we'd be totally fine and go through that very very fast well that was definitely not the case so we learned from that and now today i'm going to try to redeem the mortar one more time if he doesn't do good today never using him again except for spillway because you have to use him on spillway but we do need to prep for camo i don't want to mess that one up so my goal here is to go with like a biggest one like the very very top fifth tier mortar and then just have other towers Towers in the middle that kind of destroy it like maybe like a unstable concoction will just help blow everything up in the balloons or like a top path helicopter or bottom path plane. Honestly, there's so many that can work here. And just because we can't see into the crater doesn't mean we can't like do something like this. Like if we with like a bottom path dartling right here and just let him destroy everything up there, that might be a pretty solid play or right here. Cause then you can see into both of them. That's what I usually do is I'll place like a sniper right here because then he can attack the front of the map. Like he's doing right here. He can attack in here and he can attack in there. So that could be a fun strategy too. a bottom path dartling. We've never gone for that. Maybe we should do that today. I love just coming up with the strategies on a whim because it just makes it way more fun for me. Like if I planned all these out, I'm sure we could go way faster on each run. But I think a lot of this game is the exploratory of it, right? You just want to kind of see, wow, will this work with that one? And I think that's what I'm kind of feeling today. Now, the problem is the bottom path dartling costs like way too much for what it is. Because then you still need like an MIB to make it even pop leads, which is just insane to me. So you're talking what, like nearly a hundred grand for a fully fifth tier with an MIB with probably an alchemist, which isn't terrible, but then it's going to be hard to also get this one top path on chimps with that limited amount of money you get. Now, I led the last video with a question. If you had to remove one beginner map, what would it be? And I could not believe the answers I was hearing, to be honest. We have to go one, two, three with this. That's the clicks we need to remember so we can go faster. One, two, three, click intermediate, go for it, hit play. There you go. But I cannot believe the answers I got. One of them said cubism, which that person's just crazy because cubism's a great, great, great map. But the one I got the most of, without a doubt, was one, two, tree. Everybody wants to remove one, two, tree. And the only reason I could think that is because it's one of the newer maps and newer things are are more likely to be trashed on in my opinion but a lot of people are saying it's because they don't like the mechanics i personally think the mechanics are great on that map i love that map i think it's so cool that the fifth tiers can get discounted all the way which normally you can only discount what like to second or third tier right so the fact that it lets you do that is just pure craziness 
but I respect your opinions and a lot of them. One and one, two tree gone, but I saw some for a hedge. I saw someone just troll and say monkey meadow because that would make everybody angry. Now that person's a true troll and I love it. But now since we're on an intermediate map, tell me your least favorite intermediate that you could remove with no problems. And for me, that one's so, 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 so simple. It is bizarre. Without a doubt, 100%, I hate the map bizarre. I can say, hey, I know it's a strong word, but I hate it. That map is awful. It's not intermediate. It's like an advanced or an expert because there's only like two or three strategies that work with it. They're never the ones that you choose. They're always another strategy that you see. And I can't tell you the amount of times that I have lost playing that one on champs. I hate bizarre. Basically, Anytime that they let the community design a map, that's the two I don't like. I don't like geared and I don't like bizarre and nothing against the community or anything like that. But I, I, just, I just hate those maps. <laughs> but, I, but let me know your least favorite intermediate map. If you could get rid of one intermediate map, what would it be? Mine's bizarre. Go. But now at the time of three hours and 35 minutes, Shoots was our last place run. Now it was our first intermediate and I do expect intermediates to go slower than beginner for the most part. I'm sure some of those will prove me wrong, but for the most part, that's what I plan is that Shoots and this one will be slower than any of the rest. But I do know for a fact that Moon Landing should be, unless we make a mistake, should be 10 times faster than Shoots. Just because Shoots, you have to wait for them to go all the way to like the middle of the track unless you set up two different sides to attack on. This luckily, is one track plus it spins around in this middle part for what seems like forever so it should be very 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 quick i would love to get it in like a top spot compared to beginner maps that would be even more awesome but we just need to improve on that shoots time because i kind of didn't sit right with me i felt bad about that like i wanted to redo it but once you get a black border you can't take it away so i couldn't like restart the video or come back to it a different time it's all about getting that first back black border and that that's already been done so now we just have to live with our mistakes and our problems and then go on to the next one like we're doing here another tower that should be pretty awesome on this would be this one right like if we hit it right he goes all the way into that middle and he should just let it bounce around like a bajillion times so maybe for like impoppable an apex plasma master right here will work but honestly i don't even think we're gonna need that i think just like a a top path mortar with that Dartling we were talking about should just destroy everything. But beginner is always easy regardless of what map you're playing on. I think even like dark dungeons with triple map will be okay or triple track lanes. Just got to keep it rolling here. Remember one, two, three, one, two, three. There we go. Moon landing and then we're on deflation. For this one, I think we'll just do ex pretty much similar. We'll oh, I actually don't know. I didn't think about this ahead of time. That's not good. So I think what we're going to do here is we're going to go with, um, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Use your brain. Use your brain. I can't believe I'm drawing like huge blanks here. This is really bad. I'm just going to put this bomb here for now. Now, like for there and then oh my gosh just for now just for now just to get it going because i'm completely drawing a blank here okay what else can we do to take out moabs that was <laughs> my head was just drawing out of my brain for that okay we're gonna have one bfb we're gonna have camo leads i've got camo lead covered for this one i have pretty much everything covered with this guy we just need to strictly worry about the moab class which shouldn't be that big of a deal so maybe like a helicopter but we can't afford a good one i can't believe i'm drawing such a blank with this let's just go dragon's breath and make it super simple for ourselves and we'll put this right in the middle so that'll help and then we have enough for another one and i think that should be enough to get us going with all of this and then the guy should cover the rest i hope this bomb should take care of us for the rest of it but just in case we'll put this two right there and then we have more popping let's just keep adding stuff i guess right just put a little tack here there we go that's perfect deflation right here that was so awful and i wasted about five seconds just trying to think about what to do what a goober i managed to get zero dollars again i feel like if i tried to get zero it'd be near impossible but we've gotten lucky randomly getting zero on deflation twice now which is pretty cool and now having two wizards made me think of another strategy i like i call it the fire pit basically you just put like four thousand wizards around this thing but you kind of have to mib them i guess so they can pop purples but if you put a bunch of them in there you just have this giant fire pit that circles around a bunch of times that'll actually work it'd be kind of cool but that'd be more of a, a fun, goofy run than this super serious speed run that we're doing in order to just have the best time ever. Another amazing reason to grab our boy Oban, literally just putting like a tree right here is going to solve so much time and effort and all that stuff. Oh, we should have just put it in the front and let him just take everything in, huh? That would have been a way cooler idea. We still can, I think. I just love how this game works that way. Like you think that you're going to be stuck with just like, I'm just going to use Sada for everything. And then just changing the map up and how the mechanics of the map works makes you have a completely different idea on what to use. I love that. 
Okay, we already got the poopy brown border. Let's go to medium. And I'm not gonna change to Etienne just yet. I think I'm gonna save him for hard mode. And I just thought of a really cool idea to make chimps super easy. Now for impoppable, I do wanna test out my dartling bottom path gunner idea, but then I don't wanna take that big of a risk. You know what I think would work really, really great? What we kinda learned on Lotus Island would've worked better? If I put a tack zone right here in this little divot, see, cause it kinda like goes up just a tiny little bit. If I put this divot here, I'll buff him, give him a village with some primary training, all of that good stuff. Then we're left with a complete Moab shredder. Like it'll just tear them all down. And then we have a mortar right here cleaning up everything underneath. So he just needs to break them open. So we'll have like an ice tower here and then the mortar will clean it all up. And it should be relatively fast because every time I use a tax zone, it shreds things open. But then what about like, what about round 100? What are we gonna use? Maybe like a Moab Eliminator, like the middle path guy? I've said this before, but I really like the progression of going from deflation to regular medium mode because then you can know what works with the money you already had so you don't have to test out any new theories because this is pretty much what we used well, similar to it and it's working just fine. But then I had another idea for a chimps because what do we always have problems with? Like last little rejects that kind of get through and then mess us up. So what if we put a perma spike right here. Now normally you put a perma spike at the end, but with the towers that we're using, if it makes it to the end, it's already too far anyway. So maybe we can have it here so then it doesn't take that too long. Because like if you miss here and then it goes all the way around this, all the way around this to here, you're gonna waste seconds, tons of seconds. But this place, it'll spin around, it'll go boom, and then we'll win. And so what I'm thinking is like a mortar, a spike factory, and then attack zone up front. I know we can afford all that. I just don't know how good that'll be. But I don't know, I'm changing my mind every second. I just cannot think of a cool chimp strategy. I want it to be perfect, but also easy. But also work the first time so we don't lose. And this is awesome to me. Just throwing Oven's tree up in the front. That is such a speed hack. If you could make those trees stronger, the thing would just be overly broken. That's awesome. But nothing's gonna even make it that far. So I'm just gonna go back to an elite defender. I think that's a better tower here just to make everything quick. I can't say I'm scared, but I'm like a little bit nervous of military only because what are we gonna use? I'm thinking of course like a sniper, but not right away. So we have to lead with a mortar. That's kind of weird. So I guess just stay with Oban and then snipe out anything that gets past us or should we go to straight for a mortar if we can afford it yeah we, we do have brambles we can survive until we get to 500 bucks yeah that's not too bad and then even if you miss because of the range is like all over the place over here it just hits every direction possible it's still gonna hit it because it circles around so much so maybe it's better to start in the beginning right here and then just like rapid fire it so we can help pop quicker yeah because we don't need them to go to the middle that's just a waste of time so here's my plan so far for just a basic military only i'm going with this one as our power hitter because he super attacks fast especially once we get the artery or battery thingy we got there and then he's our camo revealer with that signal flow now the problem I'm having is that he's gonna be like my Moab popper and then we'll take them all down in here But we have to wait for everything to get into the middle of this crater and it's taking extra time I just can't think of what would be a better spot for like up front We can go with the helicopter, but it's not gonna necessarily make it any faster He's still gonna move back into the crater anyway So I think the best would just be going with like a faster tower. Like we just need that 5,500. Nothing's gonna get past us. We just need to get past us faster. So with this one going just berserk, if we put this like this, is that better? I mean, it will be and then until the camo comes in, right? So maybe now's the time to go with something like this because then we'll camo's done and all the balloons are done. The only thing we might struggle with is Moabs, but then I could just move this guy back to the middle if that's gonna be a problem. And I can't believe we haven't unlocked Pop It Aha yet. I'm not the biggest fan of that upgrade. I talk so much smack on the mortar. Of course, I don't like the other upgrades, but I wonder if that would be better than the top path for a map like this. You experts gotta let me know below because I just only know the top path. I know to use shattering shells for like round 98, and I know to use the top path for just destroying big groups of balloons. Found out I should move this guy to the front as well. Like why am I having him in the middle if everyone else is there. I just thought he would miss because he's slower, but he's really not that much slower. And then we'll put Oban's tree up front and just super speed this. I love this. I mean, I'm sure some of you knew, but can you believe how good the mortar is actually doing? I know we're only on round 60 or going up to 60, but so far he's not letting me down, which is really cool. But some maps are just perfect for him. So I mean, is that, how do you judge that if he's a good tower or not? Like this map and then the other one I'm thinking of is Spillway are the two best maps in the entire world. It's like they were meant for that gross tower. Now that might've been a crucial mistake already. I was just instinctually going for crossbow first, but I don't know if that's gonna be a good play. This is a very, very, very tough one. Apocalypse, I don't even know what I'm gonna do with it because normally I would have like a bin or something or a sada to carry us through, but this guy won't. 
I can't believe we made it all the way to crossbow without any problems. And then Oban still hasn't even had them circle around the crater once, so he can still attack two or three more times. Is this actually going to work for once? Now, again, I'm not going to get big headed. We're going to go straight for that druid because I think he's going to be the best play for this. He always is. And I always regret not getting him because we get overran with those regenerative balloons. So having something like a druid is perfect, but having just the crossbow should be pretty good. That means we have all camo covered and all lead covered at least for a little bit here. Okay, there it is. There's the explosion. We were doing just fine. I was actually about to comment on, am I just getting completely lucky? And then all of a sudden, poof, this big burst of regeneratives come through and some white balloons and we just get destroyed on. But now that we have the druid, we should be okay. I really want to start farming because we have all of our bases covered. We just don't have anything for camo lead. And I know it's just going to come up out of nowhere, but heck, we can, we can afford a farm. Let's go for it. <sighs> I get so stupid with this, but worst case scenario, we sell let's say this guy and then we buy a sniper that can be top path and middle path and we're good it's because i always confuse a pop lips with alternate balloon rounds i always feel like a camo leads popping out on round 24 but that's just not the case i think it doesn't come out till 59 right it's just a little sooner because the round just starts coming out sooner but i think we're gonna be fine and I don't care what anybody says, I still feel like this is a faster way to farm because this one I can just sell it when I hit 800, I think, and then I haven't, yeah, look how quick that was. Maybe it wasn't because this one, but when you go with the bottom path, I believe it sells for a lot more, which makes it justify. I ask every time, but I'm just gonna keep doing it. And I went with this guy on a sharpshooter because of my camo was lacking, but so far, so good. Now, what are we gonna use to pop Moabs? I actually like this one as a choice. I think he'll be solid. Cause he pops leads, he can pop camo with the village, and then he can chase the big Moab around. So if something was to happen, he'll help clean it up with this guy. This plan is not the fastest for popping Moabs. We're actually struggling a little bit with them. Nothing that's gonna get past us, but just not the best. So I decided to grab another farm, and then once I hit 10,000, I'm gonna sell both of them and grab a patchy dart ship, and then we should speed up very drastically, like a lot. Okay, yes, now we're not even leaving this little area. So then I think if we throw something here in range of the village, like a bomb like that, we're good. Now we've leveled up a lot in the limited amount of maps that we've played, but now it's becoming like super scarce to actually level up. So how long does it actually take to finish all your monkey knowledge? I honestly thought when we started this that it would be fairly quickly, and that's just not the case. It feels like we have a long road ahead of us if it's gonna be this slow to level up each time to get one monkey knowledge point, and then it takes like 17 to get one monkey knowledge tree that you want. It's crazy. But that was actually very good and clean for an apocalypse run, and now we just have reverse. Oh my gosh. So starting back here though, I'm not used to this. This is actually kind of weird. I'm just gonna put him here and then hope for the best and then put this guy into the track again. You can tell the difference though. This crater kind of opens up and this kind of opens in, like it kind of encloses on itself, which is kind of crazy. So Oban's really not hitting as much as I'd like him to, but it does look like he's gonna get a couple of swirls in there. Now, one thing I've been pondering in my head was that when someone asks you your least favorite game mode, do you just automatically, without thought, say half cash, or at least I do, just because half cash can be quite awful. But if you notice in these runs, half cash isn't giving us as much problems as say like Apocalypse or Chimps. So if you actually had to think about it, you sat down and you thought, hmm, is this one actually hurting me a lot? What are your top three hardest to complete game modes? Not the ones that you hate, not the ones that you wish were gone, but just like, what are the actual hardest ones? Because in my head, I think I would say Chimps for sure is number one, then Apocalypse, and then maybe Half Cash third, or sometimes alternate balloon rounds can get a little bit tricky too. So I'm curious to see what you guys think about this question. I'm sure a lot of you will still say Half Cash because Half Cash can be the devil, but I think Chimps gives us more trouble and same with I mean, even double HP can kind of mess you up if you're not ready for it. But chimps just sticks out in my mind because I have lost to round 98 on chimps so many times I could cry. And it's just such an awful feeling, but that's also too, I used to just exclusively do chimp strategies for YouTube. So I was working on chimps more than the average balloons player would. So that's just kind of my hang up with it. And the reason I'm asking that question is because a lot of people put timestamps into these videos or they ask me for timestamps. And for a while I was just including timestamps of what I thought were the hardest. So it lead me to believe like maybe other people have different hard maps or hard modes than I would think are hard. That is a giant reticle. Why is that thing so huge? I do not remember it being the size of the entire map. That is crazy. Which I was wondering to myself, do people actually use guides for medium or reverse mode or regular standard hard? I don't think so. I really don't think so. 
But this is what I was waiting for, is to get this guy to target independent. And then if I juice him up, not the sniper, just him. I think that'll work. Yeah, so far just him. It's just going from Buckshot to this one is awful. Like Buckshot sucks. Like it's one of the worst upgrades of this entire game. I don't know anybody who like realistically uses it unless they're going for this tower. And then to go to the next one's like 60 grand. That's just pretty insane to think about. So this is kind of what I was thinking for chimps mode, having attack up here and then having the dartling also there. But I just don't know. That could be such a risk because if we can't get the Dartling in time, which I don't think we will, we could have huge problems. I'm going to switch to Etienne for this one. If I can click fast enough, there we go. And I think I'm going to get Bookworm Etienne skin here soon because we have $10,000. Might as well use the money, right? And just put him actually, how about like right here in case we need to clean up at the end too. That's actually not bad. Then just simply put our dart here and then we just got this super clean area. There we go, there's a level up. Level 96 we're at already. That's pretty crazy. We haven't even finished beginner mode yet. We still got like two pages left of that thing. But since we are in hard mode, I am gonna do my best of balancing between safety and speed because I don't want any problems. But I thought that going as fast as we did and as clean as we did with no mistakes on Lotus Island would have for sure been a first place. But we got fourth place, meaning that, well, one, we're just getting better in general. So all of our times are kind of like getting close to each other and two, you kind of have to risk it for the biscuit. You can't just go a super safe strats to not have mistakes. You need to go big or go home so you can actually get what you need. And I think my path of farming early on and sacrificing those pops is actually better because then we have the money to just wreck it in those in rounds. We're already kind of getting a little overwhelmed where they're going to Etienne. Now he'll be there to clean them up. So I'm not worried about losing any balloons or anything like that, but we are losing a lot of speed, even with this guy right here. See, just you need a tower that can just shoot right into the middle. I don't care like how good and fast and strong is. We need something that's just better up front. So I liked how we did it with this guy earlier. Oh my gosh. We don't even have a way to pop these leads right here or those balloons in general. What's going on here? That was actually really gross. We don't need to worry about camo leads or even camo for a little while here. So I think I'm gonna switch this back up and go with, oh, I need another farm, but I don't wanna mess anything up. So we're just gonna go like this one and then like this. Now we're okay. And we can put this into the middle more, which is what we wanted to begin with. A little bit of a sacrifice on time to make all those little moves, but I've gotten my extra farm in there and then we have the drones for 36. And now we, do we have full, oh cool, we do. We have the full like camo regime here, so we're good. Oh my gosh, this is my fine, this is my Moab run right there. Again, I was getting greedy. I thought it'd be smarter to go for a farm than just like upgrade to this guy to like flame blast or something, but we definitely need to go flame blast. Oh, because we don't even need cam, ah, oh, duh. We have the global camo. I totally forget that that's even a thing. And I'm sitting there, why do I even buy camo? What a dummy. Now we're good. So I wanna go with that same strategy, but I think this would probably be a really good spot, right? Because I think his range is long enough that he'll go back to here and kind of attack. So we'll lock it in here for now, and then go with this one all the way down to here. Now it's the biggest and ugliest reticle I've ever seen, but I think he should actually, look at that damage go up though. He's getting 30, 40 at a time when it's a big group of balloons. That's pretty awesome. Now on chimps mode, this isn't gonna be easy though. So I'm thinking if we led with a couple dart monkeys and a sniper, then grabbed our Etienne pretty quickly. We can grab a wizard just like this because I think this wizard is doing us a lot of good having the flame here and then his flame breath up here. This is what haunts me though and I'm gonna have to buy a different tower. Even with farms, I only have $25,000. So this is not realistic to think that we're gonna have $60,000 on chimps mode. And we'll be fighting our way there the whole entire time to even get to balloon exclusion zone. The Dartling's just not a good tower for anything that's not like impoppable or like a boss event. I just, prove me wrong, but you're just shooting for the fences. We would have to work on that strategy. But I feel like this guy should help a lot. If you put a Embrittle right in the front, this guy should do more damage and he should do more damage, right? Because they're all projectiles essentially. And then 38,000 is a little bit more realistic to shoot for in a chimps game. And it will be slow. That's the thing, it'll be too slow. Oh my gosh, it's gross. You know what would work perfectly would be Spirit of the Forest, but that would be also really slow. It'd be a great tower though. I wonder how good this one would be right up in the front top path. He'd just spin his little thing around and then just hopefully win. So to get that tower, we have to sell all of my farms for a total of like 15 grand. And that's to get it by 80 though. So we are trying to get it by 100, which will get a lot more money in these next few rounds if this was on Impopular Chimps. But at the same time, like, 
I just don't know if that's realistic. We're gonna be fighting our way to that. I really wanna get this tower, but I'm like so on the fence if you can't tell. I'm so scared, but I just wanna do it. It's like, I used to jump off rocks into the water when we used to go to the lake a lot, right? You go a really, really tall rocks, you jump off in the water. And I'd sit there and I'd kinda rock back and forth cause like I really wanna do it, but I also don't wanna die. So I'm like back and forth, back and forth. And that's exactly that same feeling I'm getting right now. There's no denying it's a great tower though. Watch it just easily shred through a ZOMG. It's just getting there is the scary part. One, two, three, where are we at now? I think we're on Magic Monkeys only. That's not bad. I guess we'll go back to open though. This takes time, dude. What are you doing? I keep forgetting, but okay. We'll go back to him for that one just because, and we'll put our open here, of course. And then I think a Drew to be the easiest. It's always is the easiest. But then I also think this is a great tower because it's gonna hit everything. It can also go into the crater and I'm gonna try to use it to make me money. If we get to that rubber to gold relatively quickly, I know we've tried this in the past and it didn't work as well, but this one is better because Open has a lot of time to hit one track. Because if you think about it, on tracks like Monkey Meadow, Cubism, you have a few different times to hit the balloons. Yes, you do. But this one, you have like four or five times, don't you? Because it has to circle around once, two, three, four, and then he has to hit him here and then hit him there. He has a lot of chances to knock these things out. Point of that being is that I think we can actually go fast and save up enough money to get lead and rubber to gold without it like wrecking our whole game here. So there it is, let's hope it helps because now we're starting to actually get struggled on here. I think it's just better to get maybe this guy to this one. I don't want him to get Caltrops because then we'll pop more. Actually, maybe I do. I really hope this is enough for round 40. I think with the brambles, you can't really miss like he normally does. So if he goes right here, you can throw him down and they'll for sure hit. Oh, we did it. Okay, cool, that wasn't bad at all. And I think we're still making money here. Now I haven't gone with like a Druid or anything because as soon as you place that like middle path Druid, then you lose this guy's ability to make money because he just pops everything at the front. So what I'm thinking is if I went with an, a wizard and gone with a top path one, that'll be a great tower. I just don't know how much range he's gonna have. Now let's do it anyway, let's go like this. Oh my gosh, he covers the entire track. So I don't know if the gold guy's actually doing anything anymore. I just can't believe how big the range is on this wizard. Like I knew it was big, but the alchemist makes it even bigger. It's almost as big as that mortar reticle. No, the dartling reticle for the bottom path, that big old shotgun one, that thing's crazy. You can see the difference here though. As soon as that berserker brew goes away, like it is a good increase from the alchemist, but still on its own, it's still going to the end of the track. Now I have no proof of this, of course, because I don't really know how it works but I am getting what feels like a ton of money with this guy right here, because now I have enough for this guy already, which I don't know if I would on a normal day. But unfortunately, I totally forgot when saving up for him that we've done this before and 63, he couldn't hang. But it might be different since this, oh, what the heck? Is it cause I'm, oh, I have an Oban buff and then I'm Alk buffed. That was insane. You guys have seen this happen before or lack of happening. He loses on 63, but now he's just shredding, whatever. I guess we just put our open tree back up in the front lenders, rake everything in and make this super fast. It's crazy because one of my comments said that Magic Monkeys only would be the best on Moon Landing. Cause I asked you guys, what would be the best map for like military only? And this one so far has been the best, but not for like the normal reasons that Magic Monkeys would be. I think the reason that person was saying that was because all these towers can like shoot into the middle of the track, well, except for this one, cause he's lame but we're actually just keeping them all at the front, destroying everything. Nothing's even gone past us, which is super cool. I don't think anything's seen the crater in dozens of rounds. I'm pretty sure that answers my question. These are like so much slower to get money without the rubber to gold guy. That guy just gave me money. But now with this one and this one, like I think we should be pretty good on 80. And then as soon as it breaks open, we'll just go like that and then clear it up. <laughs> that is really cool. I don't think it was fast as the other one with the Dartling Gunner, but it's still pretty good. And now we're on double HP. Let's stick with, uh, no, no, I'm gonna stick with Oban. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Because I don't like the double HP. I think they're very difficult. And so I think having Oban's Brambles is gonna be that extra bit of damage that we need. Although Etienne's drones would have been good because they would have stayed in one little area. Oh man, usually they're just not good, but this case they would be. So for this one, I just went with the total greed strat and got my druid because he is keeping everything at bay except for those camos that you saw there, which we really, really need because for this one, I'm pretty sure we're just gonna go with a mortar, but like all the way to the Moab assassin and then we'll sell it because uh, you guys just know this one's super, super tough. Oh my gosh, I didn't even think about this. That's not good. Okay, is that the last ones? Okay, that's the last camo, so I don't even care. Let them, let them get through. Oh, they didn't even get through? They just went through the spikes? That's awesome. All right, so then we're gonna grab our Moab Assassin, and now we can take down the Moab with zero, zero problems. 
in which we can keep to farming, but then we do need some better camo though, that is for sure. So there we go, oh my gosh, that was instant, that was so cool. So we got rid of you, now what are we gonna do for camo? Let's just grab this guy and put a village on it. I think that's the best plan right now. And now we got everything pretty much covered. But with these right here, I don't see how it's really gonna be a problem, we're done. We already have enough and we're essential, we can do whatever we need to do. I think what would be kinda cool actually, actually why is that taking so long, I don't like that. I think a fun one to destroy double HP Moab will just be to get rid of this one. And we'll buy camo still, but we'll get this one instead. There we go. And then we'll buy this one. And this one will be the other path. And the reason why is because I want to go with some like double discount supers here. Let's make it super easy. Because it drops their price down to 16,000 for the Sun Avatar, as you can see, which is just super cheap compared to what is it, like 21 or 24,000. So you're saving tons of money. And then their range is ridiculous. They're just a great tower to have, and they're cheap. I'm actually struggling on these Moabs. I didn't think of this. That's not a good idea. <laughs> okay, well, they're double HP. I totally forgot. And I used the Moab Assassin for that first one. So I shouldn't have bought in two supers for whatever reason I did. Because I still haven't yet to figure out like a good tower that'll just wreck these stupid double HP Moabs like really, really fast. Like kind of drives me crazy of how not fast they are. If I had to guess, I think like hands down best would probably be the XX xl trap right oh can i not get one more come on man what are you doing because like i could put it here that's not the worst let's go like that but the xxx <laughs> the xxl trap can hold so many balloons that i think that it doesn't even care that they're double hp and granted we have that monkey knowledge now that actually leaves moabs in a partial damage state so we're making it even easier on ourselves so we just need to go fast I think that's the play in the future is just XXL traps. I just thought this would be fun because this is actually a viable chimp strategy in my opinion because it can't shoot here in the middle or nothing, but it can do pretty much everything else. Like 63 was no problem. I didn't even realize it came through. And then we're taking down these fortified mobs pretty quickly. I think once we get him, it'll be even better. Let me know what you think, but I think we should be going for this a lot more. Like in this case, for sure, a monkey town. All monkeys within the radius of the monkey town get extra cash per balloon pop. So if we would have went with him after our first super monkey, we'd have gotten enough for the second and the third, like pretty much instantly. And we'd have a bigger range so we could place another one here. Like I, I rely on the small potatoes of our like little bottom path farm, which is doing quite well at 18, 15 and $13,000 respectively. That's pretty good. I feel like we could even have like way more money right now. I want to say this glue gunner is my final tower, but we have a ton of money. So does it really matter? And I think if we just put this one right here and go all the way up to overdrive, it costs 21,000 and these sell for 15,000. Oh man, we still need $6,000 to get that guy. And it looks like we're actually going to get it. That's crazy. Okay, that's fine though. Let's just roll with it. This is awesome. This is just double HP Moabs. And we have a triple sun avatar with glue and tax strat with double discounts. This is killing it. All right, what do we got here? This is the ZOMG, double HP ZOMG, and it didn't even get into the crater. That's awesome. That was really cool. And now we have to get ooh, half cash. I think, I think Etienne's the play. I do, I do, I do, I do. I don't want to do it, but I think it's the play. And then for this one, we're going to have to be really smart about this. So we're going to go one here, one here. Maybe right there actually. So he can shoot, no, we didn't even shoot into the th area. So like right there. I hope this is enough. I don't think he can actually shoot into the area. He can't, can he? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, he sniped it, he sniped it. And then we'll put an actual sniper here for cleanup. So I need him to shoot into the track. And I think he can. Okay, cool. He does get one hit off before it spins around again. That's really good. And I think if we do that to him too, he's the same. So what I did there is make it so now they can shoot two times before it gets to the map. So he'll shoot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm just trying to make sure I got all this right. Okay, so he's gonna circle back around, hit it there, and then it'll circle again out to him. So he gets two hits on it. They both get two hits. What's a bummer is that when you save up for Sada on half cash and you finally get her, she helps and she adds to your team. This guy just doesn't really do that for me this early on, but he just needs, he's only good once he gets his all camo and then his level 10 UK. Other than that, I just don't find him that appealing because his one drone's pretty weak. But I guess if like if it gets a little too scary, like right here with the pinks, we can go like this and then he's okay. He's good when you do that, but you just have to be better at the game so you can know the timing. Now, I think the best possible way to beat up the Moab is going to be the sniper for sure. If we can get him up to a ceramic popper, we don't care how he pops. He'll just pop it here and then he'll clean them all out. We should win still because can I hit over there? I don't know if I can. I think I blocked my, oh, he can only go here, 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 and there. That's scary. Okay, so we're going to have help. So I'm a little nervous on my choices right now. I just have a regular crossbow, but I feel like sharpshooter will do very, very well for me, especially on like 36. 
We don't have enough for it on 36 though, huh? But then I don't think we're gonna have enough for this guy. We're gonna be enough? Okay, so that's actually not good right there. But if I get this one, we do not have enough for the, I don't care, I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh, this is such a bad idea. I need him to crit the Moab. This is a very scary plan here. I think we can at least get enough for large Calibre and that'll help us out. But we just are gonna have to rely on Etienne. Oh, it's so gross to even say. All right, there it is, large caliber. That should be enough. I mean, honestly, it'll it'll take it down. I'm just worried about the cleanup. But if we use our stuff right here, so right now, oh, this is easy. Oh, okay, okay, what am I worried about? That was golden. I'm still having problems here. I think deadly precision is still the way to go. It's just this crossbow's not doing as good as I wanted him to. He's just not, oh man, what do I do here? I think a mortar will be great, but just not the best for the Moab class. And we're not gonna be able to get to like a full mortar. Maybe that one for 12,000. That one we had earlier was really, really good. He's just in a bad spot now. Let's do it. Let's just try it out and see if it works. Actually, I think this plan's super solid. Any Moab that comes out, this guy's gonna pretty much get him down to nothing, just the balloons. And then this guy will be the ultimate cleanup. And even with just the big one, I'm pretty sure we can get past 63. So I think this might actually be a viable play and the mortar might be coming in clutch here. But again, it's a, like a map design for the mortar. Like when they designed this map at Ninja Kiwi, they thought, hey, let's give the mortar a break because he's so bad. And this is what they came up with. Cause here's the ceramic rush on 55 and he's doing just fine. And that's just the third tier. So having the big one, oh, we're good. So we're actually not taking them out fully. We're getting some stuff through here, which is pretty insane given that it's just around 63. That's not good. But if you couldn't tell what I'm going with here is gonna be awesome because this guy's really good. Oh my gosh, can we not take out fortifieds either? Oh no. We need $15,000 like stat because I I put him in with the bottom path, which is not normally the one you wanna go for because it makes him slower. But if he can shoot into the middle, his juggernaut ball should in theory bounce back and forth like a madman and just make every balloon class just gone in an instant. That's the goal here. And you can see it, that's what's bouncing around in there is the juggernaut. So I think this might actually work if I can get nine more thousand dollars before we get wrecked. I don't know if it was the smartest plan to go for this juggernaut. We are getting dunked on. Like we're not getting dunked on, nothing's gotten past me, but I have to use this one now and then I think I'm gonna have to sell for this. Yeah, juggernaut, let's just do that. That's scary guys, oh my gosh. So that's working way better. And then maybe we can do this for some extra range and maybe some jungle drums, but I did not wanna sell my critical shot guy because that thing's actually doing pretty good too. But is this enough? I think it will be, hopefully. Oh yeah, we're doing really good. I don't know why, but I feel safety just throwing these druids of the jungle in there just because they just pop off. Like I just threw him down and he already has four or 5,000 pops, which is pretty clean. It's just a little bit of a safety mechanism. And then Etienne, I really think is the MVP here because I'm not gonna use it yet. But when you use that UCAV, you know you're okay. Like you're not gonna lose because it can clean up pretty much anything. And now if I use it now, we're good. I still want to use it at the beginning and then like lose to it or something, but he's such a good one. So I think, ah, oh, no, but we do need this one for sure for alternate. I know we do, but I don't want to waste the time. How much time have I actually wasted going back and forth between these two? But we need to start off with the ninja. We've learned that mistake a few dozen times. We'll start off with this one and then that should be okay. And that's a huge waste right there. Oh my gosh. And this is what I was talking about. When this actually happens, you're just throwing your time down the drain. It's not that big of a deal, I don't think. And then we just need 630 by round 10 to get our open and we should be okay. This is driving me crazy. I need a sniper, but I just know that we're not gonna have enough to get the lead as well. So it's like open for the win here, but oh my goodness. And we'll just put him right here, I guess. Like how about right there? Open. So then he'll get a little bit clean up there. And then I think he'll also get some range boost as his level grows. So he should be able to reach this track fully cause he's like missing it by a little bit. Camo lead, forgot about it again. Oh my goodness. I'm just gonna let it, no, that's how bad. I'm doing it. I'm just gonna let it waste. I'm so stupid. This is wasting what, 10 seconds? Eight, nine, yeah, that was 10 seconds down the drain. That was dumb. I just didn't wanna sell the farm and then just buy it because then it, all it would have done is split it open and then we still would have had like a red balloon straggling. So the, the time would have been a big waste. So I greeted too early, unfortunately, and that's what caused all my problems. And then is he gonna be able to take this out? He can, okay, good. Now I just screwed up, didn't I? We're gonna need something else here. Oh my goodness, is that too much for us or are we good? I don't wanna lose. Is that good, is that good? We're good, we're good, okay. Cannot believe that. Okay, so don't greed on alternate balloon rounds unless you have the sufficient funds to like do so. And now the problem is too, is we don't have anything to actually pop the, oh my goodness, the Moab with. This is getting bad, I'm getting too greedy. So my plan was to have a main Moab and it might still be a good idea, 
but I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I don't want to, but I think we should. Is it okay or are we gonna be all fine? I think we'll be fine, actually. He'll pop it open and then he'll pop, yeah, yeah, okay, that was good. But I'm still gonna go for that main Moab here because we're gonna have more Moabs and I don't wanna get wrecked on. So we're gonna do two things here. One is this one first, because that would be dumb not to. No, we actually have to do this. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I just did that. I'm being really sloppy here, so sloppy, and it's just because I'm greeting, but we're not gonna lose, so it's okay. That's, that's all that matters at this point, honestly. Okay, this'll be fine. This is one of the best towers for this map, just for the fact that it goes into the middle like that. I love it. Okay, now with this, we should be okay. Yes, okay, good, 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 good. I still can't even start upgrading my farms yet because I still need better for this guy. <laughs> Dude, we are getting dunked on. This is hilarious, actually. Okay, now, now we should be okay. So far, this is working for like general purpose, but I just don't like it. I just don't. Maybe if I put this one here, it'll be a little bit cleaner, but is it actually gonna hit the bottom of the track? I don't know. 97, nice, okay. But I need to, uh, I guess right here would be a good spot. And we're gonna go all the way to this one, lock it the giant little range right here. Because the problem I'm having is that main Moab is great, but it slows down the Moab class so much, it kind of hurts my brain how long it takes. So it looks like it attacks all the way down there. That's perfect. Okay, and then we could Alk buff him up like right there. Oh, that's great. This guy's gonna really make a difference. So I went with the helicopter on this one and with $33,000 saved up, I can grab, oh shoot, I'm off $200, 196 bucks. Come on, buddy. All right, there it is. Now we have the Apache Prime and then we have this guy here. This is such a great tower for this map and the fact that it spins around so many times gives this guy like way too many times to attack. This might be one of the longest tracks if you think about it because it goes around a few times, a few different times. That's pretty cool actually. But so far, we're in the contending spot to be one of the top times in just all of the runs completely, not even to do with intermediate. So this one might be a hard one to top. And round 80 on alternate, I think has two ZOMGs, right? I didn't even see the first one, so it might be pretty easy. Oh, we're just waiting for it, I guess. Dude, Apache Prime is a destroyer of worlds. That was so quick. Should we just go for him for champs just to be on the safe side? I think I'm gonna switch to Etienne though for this one. And oh, we're getting so good. Oh, that's not good, that's not good. What, what are you doing, what are you doing? I was gonna say, we're getting pretty good at this and then I just screwed it up completely. So we can't start with him. So maybe we can start with a, can we start with this guy or no? Can we? We have a free dart monkey maybe? Maybe, maybe, okay, cool. Oh, we're actually starting with the ninja. There we go, that's what I wanted. 360 right there. It's the starts of all of these maps that make or break you on Impoppable, that is for sure. But I think that solidifies that we cannot start with the ninja on chimps mode, so I guess we'll just start with a few different dart monkeys and then save up for our, oof, our hero. What are we gonna use for this one? This is gonna get weird. Like, this is okay for now. We could easily save up to our 920 Etienne, I believe, I think. Because I've always said, what do I tell you? I say, if you get a 201 or a 202 ninja, you can save up for any of your heroes, except for with the exception of like, Churchill because he costs a million dollars. But this one we should be able to do, yes, we're good. Because we need that UCAV ability as fast as we possibly can. That's gonna like get us through 63 in case we screw anything up. No, we're gonna have money. This is impossible. I'm thinking of chimps. And there's our Ed team. We're good. We are good, guys. And to catch back with some of that lost time, I think this will be a better play because eventually we're gonna have a level eight Etienne and then we can all see camo. So I don't know if this is a play, but I think it'll work out. And then, cause we can, oh, da da da, that was the whole point. We can move this one to here and then it'll hit it a few dozen times. That's what we were hoping for. Now we're kind of, you know, bad on these purples. Oh no, we're not. Cause we have the ninja. We are so good right now. I honestly don't know what we're gonna do about the Moab yet, but again, I'm just gonna start greeting cause I think we're gonna be okay. He's nowhere near level eight, but it's, it's fine, it's fine. We are so much farther behind on our farms than we normally are on this. This is pretty insane to be honest. But I think with this, we're good to go until 39 so I can maybe get my one more farm. But usually I would have like at least one bottom path on a beginner map. So this is kind of crazy. I actually don't know if I should buy another farm. I think that might be a bad, I don't care. You know how I am. We're gonna do it. I'll say that might be a bad play since we don't have enough money to actually buy anything else either. But who cares, right? Who cares? You only live once, just go for it. But now I'm really worried about the Moab. What if we go with Flame Breath and the Druid? Yeah, these could all take, we just need to take it down. That's all we gotta do. So this might work out. $3,500, hopefully. Did we get it? Did we get it? No, we didn't get it. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Oh, dude, 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 dude. what are you doing? Pop it, pop it, pop it. Okay, we did it. We did it, okay. 
That was really rough and I don't actually know what just happened, but it worked, so that's all that matters. And now we got this guy, so we can start farming a little bit better. <laughs> Oh, and we got our camo. So this guy sees camo, he sees camo, we are good. Now here's the thing though, we've been doing that same farming method a lot and I'm, I'm gonna use it, but we're gonna change it up a little bit because I kind of drove myself crazy of having to like actually hit the farms and click the buttons and stuff. And I don't like that, never have. But I do love that Monkey Town just gives you like crazy money. So we're gonna use that as to our advantage. And then we are gonna at least get one farm with it because why not, right? And then we made it a monkeyopolis, and then we're gonna get this one too because I'm greed balling a little bit. But again, we're doing really good with what we have. So I'm not really concerned. I just want one farm here. Remember we need 11. Oh no, I sold a lot. We could sell all these right now and just buy this farm that quick. Well, I'm almost that quick. Dude, that was crazy. I totally forgot to sell it for the other one. I totally forgot my own strategy. But we need to worry about 63 right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go with that mortar because I think he's pretty solid, to be honest. We're going to put him right here in the middle. Now, the last thing I want to do is sit here and hit these buttons all day for these farms and not hit buttons, but just kind of maneuver around for them. It's kind of a waste of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get 72,000. We're, well, we're only need 52,000 because we can just sell for this one. Or let's just get super lazy. Let's not even do anything. First, let's see if we can take 63 with what we got. And we can because the mortar is awesome. I told you guys. Now, this one will sell for 17. That's 20. So that's $37,000. That's like 45 grand we need. That's a lot of money. Let's just buy something else in the meantime. Oh, we actually have enough. If I just sell... Oh gosh, I'm so bad at this game sometimes. Cause we can just sell this one and now we have enough for the Monkey Wall Street. Now we don't have to collect anything. It'll just collect it all for us. That's awesome. Now the thing I'm thinking about here, cause I'm, again, all I did was focus on money. Why do I always do this to myself? I don't like the biggest one. It's gonna take forever and we don't have that kind of time. I'm kind of thinking we should go with like an Oban with an Archmage, but then what do we do for round 100? Like what about Oban, Archmage, Spirit of the Forest, all in range of a uh, Oban, so he gets that buff, and then have this guy in the back for cleanup. That could be pretty solid. Just because look at the gap of time it takes when these BFBs come out. That is too much time. I'm really not down for that, and that's why we did bad on Lotus Island on the final round is because of that reason. All right, 69,000 for the balloon. 69,000. That's funny. 69,000 for the balloon exclusion zone. I don't think it's terrible, but then we do need the MIB though. So that's a waste after getting a, an Etienne, but now we're good. Like, I don't think we can lose at this point. We already won the game. Plus we have like tons of money to sell for here just to add more flame to the fire. So what I'm thinking of, and I might go for, is if I go back and forth between these two towers on chimps, I think we'll be in a good spot because the $12,000 one, the fourth tier would carry us for a while and then he would clean up. But I don't need to get the fifth tier. I could just get the fourth tier, but the third tier is good enough on its own as well. So I'm thinking I should start off with the flame and a druid just like this, which will cover most of our bases. I think we should kind of follow the strategy just without the money and see where it takes us. Cause honestly, we'll have enough. I just don't know if it'll be enough in time. Cause look at this, we have two fifth tiers. We have 60 grand plus a ton of money here. Like these farming methods are insane. I can't believe I've always just gone with marketplaces like a lame cause this is crazy. But then there's also this one that I talked about. Because if we put this guy here and then we give him, oh, I don't need call to arms. I overshot that one, but we have so much money, it doesn't really matter. And then go with this one up to primary training. We're costing ourselves a lot of money here. And the placement's so bad. How do you even manage to do all this? I think it'd be better with getting just an MIB with this and then not getting the primary training one. So then you can at least put your alchemist out hitting the other tower. Because once you get homeland, that would be crazy too, because they all start going bananas. And then my last idea was just to throw one of these over here, put it on close, and then give him the jungle drums and the alchemist too, so he can pop those leads. Uh, any mixture of these towers will work. I just need to know the right one and the right combo to get there. That's where chimps just, just gets crazy. I just can't believe how much money we have. And I can't believe it's actually still getting into the middle with all of that stuff. I didn't use all my abilities and it went right there. That's crazy. So what I'm thinking here is we'll still use Etienne. and this could be really good or really bad. This might be one of our fastest times or one of our worst. But if I go like here and put him like that and then put this guy here and then put him right here, that should be enough, hopefully. Okay, there we go, buddy. Oh my gosh. And then he does that. What a joke. So we're gonna have to put this guy on strong. And then that kind of screws up all of my future spots cause you can't sell on chimps. That's pretty rough to be honest. Dude, we're so close and I just keep getting so much farther away I feel like, but I think we got it now. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, there we go. Now it's not gonna be enough for 15, but I think we should start with the Druid and then get a wizard would probably be a better play. No, maybe not. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. That'll be fine, actually. We'll go like this. Because now he can pop all of our leads for us, but can he pop camo? I don't know if he's going to get to level 5 in time. We might have to, like, strictly buy a camo tower, which would be such a waste of money. Oh, no, we're good. We're definitely going to be good. I'm going to use this just in case. Just in case. There we go. Okay, we're we're solid now. Lead's covered. Camo's covered for now. I think this is the perfect spot for this guy. So camo might be a problem if Etienne can't... Okay, Etienne's doing it. Thank gosh. Okay. And just as I thought, this guy's completely covering like all of 36. This flame guy is actually really, really, really good. And then if I put his flame here, it won't be affected by purples as much, right? Actually, I should put it more in the middle so it just gets hit every time it goes around. That's even better. And now I think mortar is the future here. So I don't want to do this, but I think that alone will just cover the big old Moab easily. Like we got these two. We're good for sure. And then once he gets to level eight, which will be right now before 40, Oh, we might actually have a good start on this. This is kind of wild. I'm going to go with this one. Okay, that's that was perfect. That was could have not gone any better. Now, this could be a really, really bad play, but I want to do it. I think we should put him here so he can be in range and hit right inside the middle right there, right there. It's not the best place in terms of alking him up later, so we might not even alk him. Oh, no, 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 no. I went with the wrong cross path. Oh, no. What do I do? Do I just eat that like cost and just do it again? Or should I just go with the top path cross path and not even worry about it? I guess we're just gonna rock it. I don't care. I don't care. We we screwed up. We're gonna live with our mistake. I can't believe I just did that. I think it's significantly better to go with the middle path, but I don't think it'll be a problem. Now, you know, mark my words, it's gonna wreck us or whatever. But just having the boon air denial system, we don't need the camo, so that's okay. Dude, that was that really kind of upsets me. Why do I do these dumb things? Like we had it right there. I don't want to give up this spot is the problem. It's a really good spot. So there it is. And I'm going to go to target independent. And he's still, yeah, the, I think that's good too. Having the damage over time stuff. And then what we're going to do is we're going to buff all these guys up right here and just go a little bit faster. Now, literally, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to wait. And we're going to wait until we start struggling. And then if we're close to this one, I'm going to try to make it work with abilities. If we're nowhere near it and we have enough for this one, we'll just buy this one. But I do know that military is strong enough that both of these can carry past 63, past 70. We might struggle around 75, but I do have the UCAV, so we should be fine. Getting a little nervous. I know we're going to be fine on this round because even if it gets past us, okay, we're, yeah, we're doing really well. But we don't even have enough for this guy yet. And we're already on round 77. So this Moab or ZOMG is going to get out here. And it's going to just not go pretty. So we might have to just prematurely buy the biggest one. And I don't want to because then things are going to move super slow. But we're more than halfway for this guy. We should be able to do it. Here's really the first test to see if we're going to be able to make it all the way to this guy. We only need like, you know, like 12,000, 13,000 bucks. But if we can't beat the ZOMG now, we can't beat two of them later. Oh, we can? Oh, yes. Because then I can just use the UCAB. This will be worth... Oh, we might be able to pull this off. If not, we can go for the biggest one. But then I, the chances of us actually getting the other one is going to be pretty wild. Are we good now? Are we good? Oh, we're doing good? Yes. I might be able to make this. Oh my gosh, we're so close. The UCAB will get us there for sure. Hopefully. Oh my gosh. Look at us get wrecked on at the last second here. No, 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 no. We're right there. Don't do this to me. We just need 640 bucks. Don't do this. <laughs> There we go. Okay, we're good. We're good. Okay, now here's the big problem though. We do not have enough to beat DDTs. The DDTs cannot be popped by what we got here. So I'm going to have to buy this first for $8,100 before we can even save up for our biggest one. So this might go all down the drain to begin with because I've never liked this tower. I know there's a reason for it. So we'll see. But I, I you know it's my fault too for going for the wrong cross path. So we'll see. But like if that was a mad, those would already be gone by now. They're not terrible, but they're not the best. But hey, if we can't get enough for the other guy, this one's in range of the MIB. So it'll shred DDTs for us if that's a problem. Oh, that's this could be even awesomer. This worked out, guys. Oh my gosh. Okay, here's our first DDTs. I want to see how they... Oh, they're gone. Okay. If he can handle 95 like that, game over. Dude, this is getting way too close here. Oh, it's working, but it's getting close. Now, oh, he's, he's maxed out. That's so sick. Okay, I'm not really sure how this is going to go right here, but we do have a UCAB, and then we can maneuver this guy if we need to. But what I'm thinking here is if I have to sell, I don't know what I would do, honestly. We're just going to have to take it as it is. Just take it. Fight him off. I don't care, buddy. We do not have the like capacity in my brain to fix this, so just do it. <laughs> and then once we get biggest one, we should be okay. Oh, I should not be speeding through this, but I don't care. Let's go. Just go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. There we go. Biggest one with the jungle drums. 
with this one, it might be. Just leave it right here. We should be okay. Now, I have no idea how it's going to go on 100. I don't know what to use. We don't really have anything to use. And this is 98 and it might be bad. Okay, let's just actually, we'll use UCAS if we have to, but I don't think we will, honestly. Oh my goodness, no way. Dude, no way. Okay, let's just fight it off because I really don't know what to do at this point. I, I don't have any idea. Just, I guess maybe this one, like have it help. I don't know. I think we're, I think we're fine to be honest. And then use the UCAV just to help out. That's so easy. And then use the MIB thingy, whatever we're using. We did it. Okay, go home, go home. Hurry up, hurry up, get out of here. We did really good this time. One, two, three, there it is. FN nine, two hours and 26 minutes and 33 seconds. Where does that leave us? I believe that's fifth place. Fifth place out of all of the maps. First by a mile when it comes to intermediate. Soon we're gonna have to actually split these up into like separate categories, but for now I kind of like running them together. Oh my goodness, that was one of my favorite runs. I can't believe we went through a chimps that cleanly with no like preparation other than just talking about it in the beginning. That was sick. I hope you guys like that. I think we're close, if not able to get this one. Oh, we need two more points invested into this. That's not cool. But this could help if we ever want to use like other paragons. We can get more experience on like our boat and our engineer to get those paragons earlier. So that's cool. And then we just need one more. So we need two more monkey knowledge points. One to just throw wherever. And then this one and we're good to go. You gotta let me know what hero to get. We're so close. We could buy like 12 of them right now, to be honest. I don't know what I'd like to use though. Maybe we'll just start off the next one doing something crazy like Brickle or something. Or heck, even Churchill. But that's going to be it for today. And if you haven't yet, check out this video where we fully black border Lotus Island in one of our cleanest runs yet.